guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Arsenio Buck Show. Bring it to you today, of course, number 14, episode number 14, Stephen Covey, Speed of Trust. Guys, this is the trustee standard. Let's just break it down like this. When we believe that people are truly acting in the best interest of us, we have a tendency of believing them and trusting them. But if we don't, it's the exact opposite. So, what I want you guys to do, first and foremost, actionable step, write down a point where you believe that one person was doing something good and the other person was doing opposite, although they showed that sort of fakeness and it seemed like they always had a hidden agenda. So let me give you an example. Living out here in Thailand, of course, I went through a foray of so many different things. Um, I mean, you know, I created and bought an entire new wardrobe because I thought Thai women would accept me. Of course, I talked about that in other podcasts in the past, and I probably should renew that again. But anyways, um, it's very interesting to see that I went to the suit shop originally, okay? So I'm walking down the street. I saw some ties. I said, ooh, I need new ties. Where I work, they cost about $6 per tie, which is absolutely extortionate out here in Thailand. The ties outside of this specific shop in the heart of Bangkok were only less than $2 per tie, and they were much better quality. So I went there, and I was like, okay, this should be very, very interesting. So... I told him that I wanted some ties, and he asked me, you know, if I wanted shirts and this and that, but the guy seemed very genuine. However, there was another guy sitting there that didn't seem so much genuine, that he was just going after the quick buck. But you know what? For the next two years, I went there continuously and bought an entire new wardrobe up until 2017. So I bought these suits, I bought this, I bought that, and they always pressured me to do more and more and more, but the guy set me up on a payment plan. So I said, okay, so if this is going to cost 200 can I come in and give you 70 You can give me some stuff. I'll give you another after this and after that. And he said, yeah. So we kind of created that a little bit of trust, although he kept pressuring me to buy more and more and more. However, there was one time in 2017 around April where he, whereas he was not there. He was not there. The other guy was there. And he, of course, you know, it doesn't really matter what their nationality is, but... Um, he was, he was going to give me, I paid everything for the suits. He gave me everything. And then again, after I finished buying something, they want me, they set me up on something else. So normally, man, it's a very reasonable price to get custom made shirts. It's only $13 to get a suit. It's somewhere. It should be around, let's say a hundred to $130 for an entire suit with the other guy. But I remember I went in there this time. And this guy asked me, he said, hey, um, uh, did you want to get this? And I looked at a couple of things, and he was just very quick with it. He wasn't making eye contact. He wasn't understanding whatsoever. And I remember he gave me one of the most ridiculous prices I've ever seen in my life. I remember it was a suit and some pants. That's all it was for literally $250. That should only be probably about $130. And it's because the other guy wasn't there. And I said, oh, man. I told him, I said, man, that's too expensive. I'm sorry. And the thing is, he pressured me so much, whereas I couldn't even drop that. Because after I told him, "Um, yeah, that's too pricey. He looked outside, and I told him, okay, can I give you something now? Or He's like, no, you have to pay everything one time. And I remember he gave me the receipt and I was walking and I was like, that was the last time I'm going back there. I can't go back there. Because that trust went right through the window. He was so concerned. He did not care about the longevity of a customer. He cared about his short-term pockets. Excuse me. He cared about his short-term pockets that ultimately cost him a long-term customer. And it sucks because the other guy, he was a little bit more, um, he was a little bit more straightforward. He was uh, much nicer and whatnot, but this particular guy was not. So I remember I got on the SkyTrain, and while I was going home, I was like, hey, Raj, Raj is his name. And I was like, dude, the other guy tried doing this and that, and I told him straightforward. I said, listen, this is the reason why I have not gone back there in quite a long time. It's because you guys aren't sincere about the pricing. You pressure me a lot and et cetera, et cetera. And I remember I blocked him for a few weeks and then I unblocked him. Now, 
over the course of a year, probably up to last year, he would call me from time to time from different phone numbers. Hey, teacher. Hey, when are you going to come in? And then I remember the other guy would call me and he'd try acting very nice. I was like, yeah, I'll come in. I'll come in. Now, again, all these shirts and suits and everything, it's a luxury. And now that I understand that I don't need that anymore, why would I even go back to give my money to people that actually hustle the hell out of me at that specific moment? So, guys, when it comes down to it, he did not have the best interest in me. He had the best interest in himself, his own pockets, and that cost him a customer. Now, yes, my shirts are getting smaller. Yes, I have shirts and I still wear shirts that are probably three to four years old. Yes, I do probably need new shirts. But why do I need new shirts? Who am I trying to look good for? Exactly. In this country, I'm always pinpointed as the color child. So now, I personally don't give a fuck what I look like here anymore. Why? Because it's all what's under my skin. It doesn't matter, man. I could come out of here wearing a suit and women would still put their purse on the other side thinking that I'm going to steal something from them. So who am I trying to look good for? No one. So why do I need to buy clothes and new shoes? What for? You know, to sit on buses where there's nothing but dirt and cockroaches or to get on a sky train to get looked at very wrongly by other, you know, you know, Thai women and this and that. Hell no. Nah. I don't give a damn anymore. Yeah, I walk around with my shirt untucked. Yeah, I walk around with black shoes that are completely scruffed up. Yes. However, yes, when I do go to the other countries, the Hong Kongs or, you know, other places that I might be doing work in, yes, I will look a different way just out of the respect of myself, and of course, I'm out of out. I'm outside of a country that doesn't give a damn about black people. Okay, but in this country, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna walk the way I want. I'm gonna look the way I want, and I'm gonna act the way I want. That's all there is to it. So, guys, that's the that's the follow up story behind that. Um, but again, the trust and everything, it just comes down to it. It comes down to the basis of. Hey, does this guy really care about what I want? Does this woman care about what I want? Does my boss, does, th- does my sister, does my brother, does my girlfriend, does my boyfriend, does my husband, does my wife? Because you know what? <clears throat> this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to break down intent and then we're going to get into the accelerators in Monday's podcast. But here we go. Fundamentally, okay, intent And what the uh, people's intent is and where their heart is, it's just, again, a matter of the heart. It's something that you just can't fake. I could sniff a fake. I could sniff a, boy, I could see a bullshitter from a mile away. And you know what? If you try faking it, you're not going to be able to fake it for long. But it's something that absolutely, like, everyone absolutely needs to work on. Because you know what? If you go around, you know, life, you know, just trying to pit pocket people for just short-term money, You're never going to win, and you're just going to end up burying yourself all by yourself. See, some people, yes, they genuinely have poor intent. Might Might not be aware of it, or might not even admit it, but deep down inside, they know they go after their own profits, their positions, their possessions above people. Regardless of the, they don't give a damn about principle, they do what's best for them. However, others have good intent, right? They're sincere, right? They seek, uh, they seek out, you know, what's right for the welfare of others. Uh, execute, um, but at the same time, execution can be very poor. Though they may not realize it, but most of us deal with at least some degree of challenge in both of these areas. See, if we're really honest, we have to admit that sometimes out of motives are not completely pure. See, sometimes we approach situations with hidden agendas. Even tiny ones. And you know what? That keeps us from being appropriately transparent with everyone. See, sometimes we manifest these behaviors that don't demonstrate that type of caring openness and concern that a lot of people deserve. See, to whatever degree these challenges are part of our lives, in your lives, in my life, we're being taxed both personally and professionally. And this is why you see so many people in the world just falling apart. I mean, you see what's happening out there in America. I mean, and it's about to go down very, very soon. This is going to be the year that things do completely fall apart. Really, really hate to say that to my fellow Americans out there, but you just see it because, again, there are high taxes happening everywhere. I'm not talking about literal tax. I'm talking figuratively. Things are happening at such a rate where things are going to hit 
shit's going to hit the fan and it's going to be absolutely appalling. And so, again, we do approach situations with hidden agendas. Yes, I have a hidden agenda. The job that I'm actually, uh, that I go to on a regular basis, um, they are, I have a hidden agenda because they ask me, hey, so do you do teaching outside? I'm like, nope. I was like, I just meet up with other people. But do I do do teaching outside? Absolutely. Why? Because they pay me dog shit money. And that's why I limit my time there. I told you, give me a visa. I'm only going to work 18 to 20 hours a week. Okay? And most of those come on the weekend. The bullshit weekend classes. Do what I have to do. Done deal. Boom. And other than that, I'm not wasting my time here anymore, guys. Why? Because you're not paying me what I'm worth. And I know exactly what I'm worth. I'm worth probably 400 to 500% more than what you're paying me per hour. So, guys... Yes, I do have a hidden agenda, and sometimes you might have to maintain that hidden agenda, and it sucks because, no, I'm not going to go into work and tell them all my secrets. I'm not going to say, hey, yeah, I work at this place. I got this happening. I got a big project coming up in February on Sunday, this and that. No, I'm not. I, it's it's going to suck. Yeah, it is going to suck, but at the same time, hey, you know what? I have to do what's best for me because, of course, the best interest of the guy that actually owns the place, he he does not give a damn about the teacher's. He doesn't buy computers. He doesn't invest in new things. He doesn't invest into a new floor. He doesn't invest into killing all the creatures that actually linger within the language centers. He doesn't invest into making the place look good and smell good. He doesn't invest into, you know, real painting and real desk and real things that make people comfortable. He doesn't. And this is the biggest, biggest issue. Because you know what? When it's all said and done, if you don't give a damn about me, what do you think my intention is going to be at the end of the day? This goes for all your relationships out there. So guys, again, actionable step at the beginning. Came here to the conclusion, and now it's time to get into those accelerators because now the intent is done. However, I need to sum everything up. So guys, stay tuned for that podcast on Monday as usual. And thank you so much for tuning in to another E... Oh man, I almost said ESL podcast. T- tuning in to the- another episode of the Yard City Buck Show. Stay tuned for more. I'm your host, as always. Thanks again for all of you listening to me around the world. And shout out to Latvia over and out.